This is the farmhouse where I grew up, where my father grew up, where my grandfather grew up, where my great-grandfather grew up. The main house was built in 1860. We got electricity in 1943 with the Rural Electrification Act. And now what I am doing is I'm removing the majority of the 1960 updates and reverting the era back to somewhere between 1920 and 1950. I'm going to show you each room in the order that I did them years ago. While I am no more of a carpenter or a designer than any member of my family has ever been, I'm doing it to suit me and my tastes. We wanted a sideboard in our kitchen along one wall. But when we went to look for one, we discovered that they're very hard to find and extremely expensive. Now, one of the uh, choices we were given was to order up a base cabinet and then you would pay the factory to cut it down to the thickness of uh, a normal base cabinet. And that just didn't set very well with us. So I got the idea that because we had a couple spare Sherich wall cabinets that we were not going to use, we ran out of uh, wall space basically, to take those cabinets and turn them into a base cabinet. Because interestingly enough, the thickness of a wall cabinet is the exact thickness of a base cabinet. So I proceeded to build one from the two wall cabinets. Now in the first image here, we took the two wall cabinets and clamped them together. And with them screwed together, we turned it over. And what we're going to do is we're going to take them, the cabinets and turn them upside down because the pulls for the doors would be on the bottom uh, when it's on the wall, but if you turn it upside down, they are at the level that they would be most comfortable when the unit is setting on the floor. So as you can see here, because the bottom is the top and the top is the bottom, they don't build the tops very dirty. So we glued in a piece of uh, Luan plywood to the what used to be the top and will now be the bottom to strengthen it so that we could put items in the cupboards. And then like the other Sherich maple cabinets, we stripped it down and got it ready for refinishing. Then I constructed a base out of two by fours, as you can see, that will support the cabinets when they are upside down on the floor. And upright, uh, and we did a test fit, it looks pretty good. So then I took maple hobby wood and glued and brad nailed the uh, strips to the two by fours to create a maple facade, which hopefully will match the maple of the cabinets. And with it back on the base again, you can see that the hobby wood matches the, the hard maple of the cabinets quite well. And then it was time to strip and sand the the cabinet doors just the way we did with all the other Sherich cabinets. For the top, we bought a piece of Home Depot edge glued pine and cut it to shape and set it on top of the cupboards and then started banding it with a piece of pine. And then using our 16 gauge pass load impulse nailer and some glue and a few clamps, I was installing the edge banding. And here we see the finished top ready for final sanding and uh, staining. We then did the final finish on the doors and inside the cupboard and, and outside so that all we were waiting on was the top. And the last thing to do before putting the top on was put the stainless steel poles like the rest of the Sherich cabinets. And here's the finished product. You can see we stained it dark and put two coats of satin poly and one coat of gloss because as I explained in the earlier videos, it's much easier to put two coats of satin to build it up and then one coat of gloss than to try to do three coats of gloss. 
and that is how we built the wall cabinet sideboard. 